order. Mr. Joe Byrne has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Minister for Regional Development. I would remind members that if they wish to ask a supplementary question, they should rise continually in their places. The member who tabled the question will be called automatically to ask a supplementary. Three other members also tabled a similar question, so I will call them after Mr. Byrne. Clark, please read the question. To ask the Minister for Regional Development for his assessment of the water supply crisis currently affecting over 9,000 homes and businesses. I call the Minister for Regional Development. Mr. Deputy Speaker, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to uh, reply to this question. And can I seek your permission that uh, I, I will uh, require additional time for this answer? Uh, the consequences of the industrial dispute uh, have been unacceptable. Uh, for uh, customers over the past two weekends in particular during this last week. For my part, I am disappointed uh, that the parties have not yet brokered an agreement, and I am sorry that the public are, being, are, are bearing the unacceptable brunt of that failure. Whilst those within NI Water who are not engaged in industrial action and contractors have been doing their utmost to maintain supplies, it is not, as I have said, acceptable that households are left without essential water supplies for extended periods in particular, given the weather conditions. And the impact is not only on households and the vulnerable, but the impact is felt by farmers, places of education, health uh, and indeed health facilities. Mr Deputy Speaker, I brought in the Labour Relations Agency before Christmas and they have been working with management and unions intensively since then. I met management and unions again last Wednesday and gave them a clear, unequivocal message that this needed to be resolved, and resolved quickly. To reinforce that message, I joined the start of today's negotiations at the Labour Relations Agency and impressed upon both parties the importance of negotiating until a resolution is secured. The company is working to minimise disruption to customers' supplies and providing alternative supplies. All resources at NI Waters and the Department's disposal have been mobilised to deal with this ongoing situation. A major incident regime remains in place. The company has stressed that the key demand that pension reform be delayed is not within my gift to provide, and any settlement will require DFP approval. Northern Ireland Water Management uh, have made a number of offers to resolve the issue. Offers made have been within the terms of executive pay and, punch, and pensions policy. If the unions and the company cannot find common ground today at the Labour Relations Agency on all outstanding issues, then the emergency protocol that works successfully over the Christmas and New Year period, in my view, must be reinstated. This, uh, in my view, Mr Deputy Speaker, would give the public protection of services and the parties time and space to conclude on the outstanding issues. Mr. For supplement. Mr Deputy Speaker, I thank the Minister for coming to the House and giving an explanation of the current situation that affects so many households and businesses across the counties of Fermanagh, Tyrone and Derry. Given what the Minister has said, can I give an assurance that the Labour Relations Agency will carry on with intensive and exhaustive discussions and negotiations so that an ultimate outcome can be arrived at? Because the people that are suffering are in a crisis, and would the Minister accept that that crisis is unacceptable to them? grateful to the member for his, uh, his supplementary question. And indeed, uh, I do want to confirm that it is my clear view that uh, both unions and management should remain at the Labour Relations Agency until this is thrashed out and resolved. Uh, and I've made that clear um, uh, to uh, the parties involved um, when I met them earlier. I'm pleased that the, the tone of that meeting was positive. Uh, I don't want to uh, dwell uh, on, uh, on details of the meeting, but uh, it is my clear view that these issues now is the day and now is the hour to resolve these issues as speedily uh, and to the full resolution of these issues. Mr. Declan, thank the Minister for coming to the House. 
uh, today as well. Uh, Minister, I'm sure you're aware that um, myself and others have been out along with the, the Red Cross over the course of the weekend uh, taking supplies to uh, distressed and very vulnerable customers right throughout uh, the, the local area in County Tyrone. Uh, but certainly, um, I'm very, very glad to note that you've mentioned that you, you think it's important to reinstate the emergency protocols because they weren't in place at the weekend, which was a very, very desperate weekend with the inclement weather conditions. Uh, but could the Minister say, I, I've also noted that Quite a few problems so far have been concentrated in, in the West, in the County Tyrone, County Derry area. You know, could, uh, could the Minister uh, tell us, is it, is it possible to you know, uh, reallocate some of the staff into those areas uh, to, to, to address some of the issues which were causing the, 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 the faults and the, the breakdowns? I'm grateful to the member for his question. Uh, for his question and a very and large number of people have tabled questions, so can I repeat my request from yesterday? Please make your questions brief. Grateful to the member for his question, and, uh, and uh, I, I can say, as I've made clear in uh, my statement, that all available resources from NIA Water and my department are currently deployed. And uh, it is a matter that uh, it is not simply a matter of, of flicking on a switch and everything works again. It does take time uh, for, for systems to um, uh, 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 come back uh, into service um, and every effort is being made to facilitate that as quickly as possible. I do think that the protocol that existed over the Christmas New Year period was useful uh, and, in, uh, and indeed um, I, I would look to the unions to put that back in place um, if we are unable to reach the final agreement this afternoon but I think that at least would give uh, the potential for uh, faults to be addressed uh, at the time that they occur, rather than uh, simply uh, during working hours. Well, Mr. Barry Michael Duff. Yes, Kent Corlea. Can I ask the minister to explain why those areas worst affected by this industrial action, etc., are all located west of the ban? And if the minister accepts that there might be a perception out there that we are suffering neglect and we are suffering discrimination, largely because of the community makeup and geography west question. of the ban. That is the perception. Well, I, 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 I do have to say I, I, I worry about terms uh, like discrimination, uh, and, and I think it is frankly irresponsible of the member to come to this House and make, and make any such charge. And the member, the mem the member well knows, the order, member well order, knows. The minister will resume his seat. I did caution earlier about people making remarks from a sedentary position that is not acceptable, and if it continues, then the members who do it will not be heard in the future. Can I say to the member uh, that, that uh, uh, the member well knows that uh, uh, the uh, underfunding, consistent underfunding um, uh, in relation to NI water that has taken place over uh, a period. <laughs> and which continues to this very day. In fact, within the last 24 hours, this assembly agreed a budget, which effectively means uh, a potential cut in next year's allocation to NI Water of some 14 or 15 million. That's bound to impact on, on the service that NI Water is bound to protect. So I'm not going to take lectures from someone who put their yeah. hand up yesterday for that executive budget. Yeah. Oh, Lord Morrow. Deputy Speaker. Uh, can I ask the Minister today, we now have a crisis on our hands, in particular in the west of the province, a crisis that never ever should have been allowed to materialise. Can the Minister give an assurance to the House today and to those who are most affected by this crisis that as far as they are concerned, their water supply will be returned and they will not have to face another weekend like they've had to and that we'll not have a third world state in that part of the province? Thank the member for his, for, for his question. Uh, and I emphasise and re emphasise both at the Labour Relations Agency and in public interviews that I've been conducting over a period, not within the last 24 hours. I've been dealing with this issue uh, since before Christmas. Uh, while others were enjoying their Christmas dinner and other festivities, I was receiving up-to-date reports of the impact of, of, of this dispute. I'm not a Johnny-come-lately to this dispute. I want to see this dispute resolved. I want to see it resolved today. I'm doing an every, everything in my power to make sure that, uh, that the householders who have been 
so poorly treated uh, in all of this. The customers, at the end of the day, has to be, uh, have to be to the fore uh, uh, in this, and, and, and to, so that their services can be restored as quickly and as speedily as possible. Mr. Trevor Clark. Mr. Speaker, can I ask the Minister, um, your party manifesto in 2011 said that that said if the measure of success of devolved government is seeing positive changes in people's day-to-day -day lives, then the queues is a striking viable, a visible sign of the failure of DRD. If that was true, Minister, in 2011, then is that true today in 2015 under your watch? And have you failed in terms of your term as Minister for DRD in terms of this dispute? I, 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 I am disappointed, I have to say, with the, the tone and the attitude of the Chairman of the Regional Development Committee, whom I would have thought would have at least tried to uh, express some help and, uh, and give some assistance, but that hasn't been forthcoming. Let me just remind what Mr Clark, as Chair of the Committee, told this very Assembly. No later than Monday the 12th of January, the ink is hardly dry in terms of the Hansard of what he said. And I quote from Hansard, page 52 of the, of the record, Northern Ireland water has changed significantly from the bumbling bureaucratic beast of the freeze thaw period into an organisation that is significantly closer to closing the efficiency gap between it and its counterparts in England and Wales. I take credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you on colleagues, my wife is Lashen Ira. Thanks very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the minister. Um, could the minister just clarify for me, if I'm correct, that a memorandum of understanding exists with Department of Finance and Personnel around pay and pensions, and if, in fact, any flexibility has been shown from that department or communication from that department to facilitate and help ease the the whole issue or resolution? of the problem and difficulties that we're facing now. Grateful to the member for his question, and he, uh, and he does raise an important point. Uh, and clearly, um, uh, the Department of Finance and Personnel are an important uh, contributor uh, to, the, to, to the resolution of this. Um, and what, what we are seeking to do is to make sure uh, that any settlement is reached within uh, the terms of uh, the executive pay and pensions policies. But, uh, and I can confirm, yes, we have been in contact with uh, officials from the department and we will continue to do so. Uh, and I very much hope that everyone will have a positive attitude when it comes to sorting out and finally settling this dispute. Mr. Ross Hussey. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank you much for your comments so far. You made reference to before Christmas, Minister. I would like to know what discussions you have had with the Office of First and Deputy First Minister in relation to this issue uh, since this dispute began. Well, I am grateful to the member for his, uh, his question and, and uh, indeed um, uh, uh, in, in respect of the answer. I, I can confirm that uh, early on uh, in this dispute in uh, December I, I, I did seek uh, an early meeting uh, with the um, uh, First Minister and Deputy First Minister in, in relation to brief them uh, uh, on this issue. That meeting did not take place. I have, however, uh, continued to work through the issues both with Northern Ireland Water and the Department and the trade unions, uh, as I have outlined. Uh, I did take the opportunity to brief uh, executive colleagues at the executive meeting last Thursday and provide uh, a full assessment of the current situation. And I can confirm that I, I took a, a telephone call from the Deputy First Minister on Saturday evening, late on Saturday evening, in respect of constituency issues. I do say that in that I am defending um, both executive pay and pensions policy, I very much hope that I will have, continue to have or indeed enjoy the support of the entire executive in my efforts to have this resolved. Well, Mr Chris Little. Speaker, can I ask the Minister why the Northern Ireland Water and Executive Contingency Plans and Infrastructure have not been capable of controlling the impact of this industrial action on customers, and indeed why has the impact been geographically concentrated in Derry, Tyrone uh, and Fermanagh? I thank the member for his question. And the member will know that in terms of, of the maintenance uh, 
the overall maintenance regime in terms of plant to Northern Ireland water. Almost 50% of that plant is managed uh, by PPP contract. Uh, and that's why areas of the, con uh, of, of the province um, have not seen uh, uh, the impact. And clearly, um, I, I think the underinvestment uh, um, over the years has led to weak infrastructure in certain places. Uh, but again, uh, to those who support a budget that means a further cut to NI Water in trying to, uh, to deal with these is, uh, issues, it is a bit rich uh, uh, to, to hear the criticisms that are being put forward. Mrs. Arlene Foster. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And to the point that Mr. McAlduff made, um, whilst I accept what the Minister has said in relation to that matter, there is a very strong perception that the West is suffering, and I think he would accept that there is that perception. And I think he needs to deal with that perception because we have a number of constituents ringing us and saying, well, why are the West? Uh, uh, why, uh, why is it in the West uh, that this is all happening and there's nothing happening in the east of the province? And, you know, I have people coming to me with businesses. I have a business in Cash who are hosting, and this is a very specific question, who are hosting a dinner tonight for 40 people and they have no water. That is a new business that is going to be fundamentally damaged. I rang the MLA hotline minister and I was told it was temporarily suspended and therefore I cannot get answers for those constituents. So I'm asking you to tell us what we're supposed to do in that sort of a situation and also have you considered bringing in the private sector order, order, to deal please. with this I issue? I have a large number of people who I believe have the democratic right to ask questions so please be brief. No one, no one um, and without exception uh, in this house is more concerned at the impact to customers and businesses and um, households uh, than myself and, and that remains the, the, the case and I can uh, update uh, the House in uh, terms of the, the current situation. At, at present, 7,750 properties still remain without a water supply, and NI Water anticipate that further properties may also suffer a disruption to their supply throughout the day due to problems at Loch Braden Water Treatment Works, resulting in uh, continued disruption to water supplies in West Tyrone and areas of Fermanagh. And areas that may again be affected include Castle Derg, Drumquin, Cash, Killen, Lack, Drumore, Edderney, Irvinstown, Lisnarrick, Clonley, and Drumskinny. Uh, I regret that very much, and I want to see this uh, matter resolved. Uh, and I hope that, the op that those engaged at the Labour Relations Agency today will take that opportunity, and that, that, uh, that we can move forward to restore supplies as quickly as possible so that everybody can enjoy normal conditions again. Members, I have still six people who want to ask questions. Please be brief. I call Ms Michaela Boyle. Yeah. Uh, Minister, uh, just today I contacted NI Water in relation to Scrahe and getting a, a static water tank in that area, but I was told due to resources that could not happen today. Uh, disappointed at that, but going forward and, uh, uh, in terms of if and when this issue is ever resolved, uh, Minister, can you undertake to particularly look at weekend rosters within NI Water west of the band? Because I am hearing from the employees that long before this dispute uh, uh, came into being, there was always an issue that existed west of the band with resources and weekend rosters. Gormagut. Thank the member for her question. Uh, I note uh, the, uh, the content of it uh, and I will uh, give it consideration uh, in further discussion with NI Water. Mr Jim Allis. NI Water's pension scheme outside the remit of the public sector pension scheme. And now that an attempt has been made to bring it in, is it on a uniform basis? Because we do know that hitherto uh, the last chief executive had a 26.9% contribution by the employer to his pension pot. Is, that, is there a commonality of contributions in the new proposals right across all grades in NI Water, or is there still exclusive treatment for the upper ranks? I'm grateful to the member uh, uh, for, for his question. Uh, and indeed, uh, th these are issues uh, that, that, that are currently under discussion and being resolved, hopefully, between NI Water and, uh, uh, and the trade unions. And I don't want to, uh, in any way, um, impede on those uh, or uh, interfere in, in those. But what we want to get to is 
a fair and a responsible settlement of this dispute as quickly as possible so that normal life can be restored for those householders who have had to endure misery uh, since uh, this dispute began. Mr. Tom Buchanan. There are a huge swath of my constituency in West Tyrone are severely affected by this crisis under your watch. Now, given that this dispute has been going on since Christmas, should you not have put mitigating measures in place to stop such a crisis happening? And when are you going to come out of your closet and take your responsibility seriously and get this water back on and full to my constituents? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm grateful to the member for, for, his, uh, for, for putting a spin on his own lack of performance uh, in relation to this, because to the best of my knowledge, I haven't received very many representations from him throughout the entire period. Uh, so, so concerned he's been about his constituents. I don't want to have arguments like that uh, in this chamber. But I'm not going to be kicked about by, you know, by parties here who think, who think that just because elections are coming, that this is a convenient issue to be used as a political football. In my judgment, I'm on the side of the householders who are without water. I'm on their side to have that water restored as quickly as possible. I hope everybody in this House has that same commitment. The protocol involved notification of disruption of supply to customers, and indeed in the area that I represent, where customers have been reconnected, there are now in the last hour heavy snow is falling, bowsers have been removed, and the water is unusable due to the uh, chlorine content in it. Thank the member for for uh, raising that issue, and and, and clearly. Weather conditions have, uh, have inhibited uh, um, uh, part of the response, uh, and that hasn't been helpful, and I accept that. But let me say, as I made clear in my statement, both, uh, both the department and NI Water are at full capacity trying and mobilised to deal with this ongoing situation, and that will remain. I have said that a major incident regime remains in place, and again, that will remain, and we will hopefully, um, through the negotiations which are currently taking uh, place in another place, that, will, that can resolve the issue so that we can restore supplies and restore normality to those families uh, who so badly um, have been served by the current dispute. Well, Mr. Baslin, Deputy Speaker, uh, the Minister has reacted angrily to some questions from members, and I have to say from my position, I'm, I'm still not sure as to why there seems to be a disproportionate effect on the West than in other areas. Now, I think it's a reasonable thing, Minister, for you just to explain to people, and you did say earlier in your answers that some contracts were in no PPE and coming? some things were in others, but I do think for people in the West to let them understand that they are not being victimised would be a helpful thing for all people, and I'd like to give you the opportunity to make the matter clear. Well, I'm grateful to the member for, for, for giving me the opportunity, and I do want to stress, yes, there, there is a situation where almost 50 per cent of, of maintenance to water, uh, NI water service plant is carried out on a PPP basis. Right? primarily to the east of the province. Let me absolutely state that the West, or those parts which are currently affected, are neither abandoned or forgotten, nor will they, nor should they. And I do want to stress the importance of the restoration of services to all parts just as quickly as possible. And I, that is what I am working for. That is what NI Water uh, and my department are working for, and I hope with goodwill that we can reach agreement with the trade unions and that we can move forward with the approval of the AFP and we can have a better situation all round. Mr Edmund Put. Is it not time, Minister, that you told the unions that their demands were unreasonable, their actions are unacceptable, and bring in the private sector who will be quite happy to restore people's water after five o'clock at night and over the weekends, as opposed to the vulnerable elderly and children being starved of what is a, a, a real resource of water? Mr Speaker, I am not sure that, that, that the member who has spoken has, has the full grasp of, of, of the, of, uh, and the issues at stake here and, and, how, and how we can deal uh, with the situation 
in a way it is ultimately a management union dispute. And, you know, in a democratic world, uh, trade unions have the right both to exist and to represent their members. And I think the member should recognise that. I am and have been concerned by, that by the actions of the trade unions that, that's, that their members have taken and the impact to customer services. Um, but uh, I do think that we need to work and focus our efforts on resolving the issue and moving forward to a better and a happier place. Mr. Sean Lynch. Uh, Minister, you said there recently that you were on the side of the householders, and I, I don't doubt that. But would you be prepared to come and meet uh, some of the communities in Fermanagh and West Tyrone that are impacted by this crisis? Well, I, uh, I thank the member, and I, uh, and I hear the suggestion that he makes. Uh, where my main focus is, uh, and what has to be, I think, the concentration of all my efforts uh, is to see and to encourage that this um, dispute is resolved as quickly as possible. Then everyone will be able to enjoy uh, a standard of water supply that, that, uh, that we would find acceptable. And that's, that's my main focus, and I believe that's what uh, the, the, public, um, the wider public in Northern Ireland would expect me. Uh, to concentrate my efforts on, and indeed those most affected will expect me to, to concentrate my efforts in resolving the issue. Well, Mr. George Rubb. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, the minute, or some members have alluded <coughs> to the hotline situation. Could I ask the Minister what is wrong with the hotline? Why, why are people not getting through? Why is there a problem there? Because that, that's an essential, essential thing that uh, the people need to uh, central service for people to answer to, the, to, to, to the member, and if the member has specific examples and, and, and others have, have hinted at that, then I, I, I do need to hear about them uh, first hand uh, and, and take appropriate action. And if the member wants to share those with me, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be very interested. Mr. William Irwin. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Does the minister accept that while there are many households that are suffering. There is also a large number of farms with animals and livestock that have no water. And given there is a work to rule and there's no, the, the, the Northern Ireland Water staff do not work overtime, uh, it seems very strange that Northern Ireland Water can't resolve this issue during the day whenever the staff are working. Can you give an answer to why staff do work from, I presume, 8 or 9 to 5, why the, uh, the Northern Ireland Water staff has not this resolved? The member is, is right to the extent that it is industrial action that is um, impacting on, on work and call-outs after uh, working hours. And, uh, and clearly, uh, we, we, we have, uh, there is, um, what actually happens is that staff, when they, when they report for duty, address the faults uh, in the system uh, that have occurred overnight and over weekends. But it is not, I have to say with respect, uh, the, uh, the case that you can switch on uh, almost like a light switch and everything works again. It does take time for systems to, uh, to redistribute and, and begin to work again. Uh, and it also, um, uh, there, there are impacts such as airlocks which impact on the service. And we've seen that uh, in some of the locations. So it is not straightforward or easy by any means, but certainly. Um, one, of the, one of the difficulties is that the work to rule has meant that, um, that faults that develop late in the day or perhaps close to the weekend are not addressed until um, uh, or at the earliest possible point that we would like. That is why uh, the protocol uh, was beneficial in the run-up through Christmas and New Year, and that is why in the current situations, if we are not to get a resolution today, that protocol should be re-established. I have very little time left, so Paul Given, can you be brief? I will thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Minister has said that the major incident plan is currently still in play, but yet it is clearly failing. Uh, what contingency plans is the Minister making that if the unions continue to hold him in Northern Ireland to ransom and vulnerable people are exploited, uh, to consider bringing in the private sector uh, to try and break the lock that the unions are placing on this issue? I'm grateful to the, to the member for uh, that, um, 
suggestion, but, uh, but I have to say that, that the main focus remains uh, in, in the work being undertaken by the Labour Relations Agency. I want to express my thanks. It would be remiss of me not to express thanks to the LRA for um, their, their contribution to, uh, to, to, to try and resolve this dispute. Uh, and I very much hope that we can move to a situation where it can be resolved as quickly as possible. And of course, if it is not the case, then all our options will have to be considered. Order. Time is up. Members may be interested to know we managed to have questions from 19 members of this assembly. I think that was a good record, and I want to thank those members who cooperated.